welcome to the show everyone this is everything under the sun my name is ty and i guess i want to start by just first off briefing you i may take long pauses during this this podcast i i have what they call running pneumonia it's like walking pneumonia except you burn more calories um so yeah i, I may be inhaling deeply and you know may sound a little raspy over the microphone but bear with me so uh so something I, I kind of thought about, I'm not sure if I just yelled into the microphone, <laughs> but something I kind of just thought about was, uh, well, not just now, but over the course of kind of planning out this episode, was an idea, well, the fact that I'm constantly coming up with the topics every week. And I mean, I'm fine doing that, but with everything under the sun being like the name and with all of you being involved, I want to keep you involved and I, I'd love to get some ideas from you about like topics that that should be discussed or maybe you'd like to hear being discussed over the course of this podcast. So something I I did was I got this box and it's just a small little box that came from Amazon that I'm recycling and using uh, for this purpose. But as you can hear, there's a little piece of paper in the box. Right now, I'm going to be honest, there are just some balled up receipts in there. But <laughs> the the point will be to have the names or the topics of the episodes written inside the box, the different episode topics, obviously, and some of which are provided by you, you know, like if you want to send me in some topic ideas or just whatever, uh, everything.sunpodcast.gmail.com. Uh, if you want to send me some topics, I will write them down, most likely on some kind of paper that's just lying around. I don't want to use brand new paper to ball up and put into a box, but, uh, maybe it's receipt paper. Maybe I'll use receipt paper, but, um, I'll put your topics in the box. Some of mine will be in the box. I have a huge list of different topics because this is everything on the sun. I mean, it can range from being a dick to, you know, social infrastructures and business ethics or some shit like that. I don't know, but it can be really about anything. And I, I'd love to go into different topics. Obviously the topics that I'm bringing is coming from a psychological perspective, so that's what I'm going to go into a lot, but, you know, the the point of this podcast is to not only raise awareness of these concepts that we think about but don't really speak about, but to start speaking about them more. I mean, the only way to make these conversations not downers or buzzkills is to start having these conversations more, start normalizing these conversations, everything, um that involves who we are as people and, and how we've come to be the people that we are today. And I think that involves so many different aspects and traits and experiences. And I think that they're all something that we should value and we should feel comfortable speaking about because they all influence us. And especially today's topic, um, today's topic is going to be social obligations. And I think, I mean, just in that, I think a lot of us can kind of come up with a few things that we felt we were hindered by in some kind of way because of this social infrastructure that feels that makes us feel like we're obligated to do certain things that are outside of us. And, and of course, we're going to talk more about that. But um, I'd love this podcast to be something where we can start talking about these, again, these things that like that influence us, um, you know, mental health, uh, these the day to day struggles that we deal with, the enjoyment and the love in life, the all the experiences that culminate this human experience and I, I want that to be a normal conversation. I know it takes time, but it it starts by having these conversations. It starts by making it something that can be had, and maybe you can share some laughter with the people that you're you're having it with. You know, share some tears, share some laughter, share some hugs, um, enjoy one another, and, and value the fact that we can come to each other and have these conversations and feel comfortable having those conversations. That's what I hope to bring from this podcast. And, and, um, yeah. Uh, so, so that's kind of that. So if you want to email some ideas, again, that, uh, email is everything.sunpodcast at gmail.com, or you can go to the social media pages, which I will talk about at the end of the podcast. I don't want to spend too much time with this stuff in the beginning because there's something called, um, recency effect and people remember more of things that are more recently told to them. So I'm going to tell you the other information at the end of the podcast. That way, when you're ready to finish your drive or do whatever the whatever you're doing, <laughs> you can uh, like, 
review, subscribe, or rate, review, subscribe, whatever it is I say, and um, and maybe think about some of these topics for yourself and think about who you may want to have these conversations with. So, um, but yeah, but but when you're done with your drive, you can you can come back and and know what the social media pages and all that stuff is. See, this is why I write stuff down because I'll go off on a tangent and I'll forget why I was talking or what I was talking about. So I'm glad I remembered what I was talking about in that case. But uh, this box, fill the receipts, hopefully your ideas and my ideas soon. Um, What I'll do is at the beginning of the episode, I will open the box, pick out a topic. They'll all be balled up. I won't know what the topic is. I'll try to make the papers as like indiscriminate as possible. So I don't really know what topic I'm picking. And uh, then I'll read it at the beginning of the episode. So we know what the topic is and I'll read it at the end of the episode because of the recency effect. So I will, um, I will just in that there, this box, this is a plain box. I might, I might add some words to it or color, but, um, it says fragile. So that's just, that's just all it says right now. Uh, but anyway, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was, I mean, I, the first two episodes, I mean, this is a very new podcast and of course it can shift gears in any type of way or, I mean, it's my podcast, I can do whatever I want with it, but at the end of the day, it's like, I I don't want to bring information that isn't relevant to you, or bring information that you're getting from other sources from people that, I guess, are better at doing that, and with that being said, the news that I bring at the beginning of the podcast, I mean, you you may have other podcasting sources that give you actual news from actual newscasters, or maybe you read articles from actual news reporters, you know, so you can get a better depth of understanding from those things. So I don't want to reiterate things or even give you a broken understanding of what I'm speaking about, especially if you have these other sources. So, uh, I mean, I may bring some news if it's like really big news or something, then I will bring it to the podcast if I feel like it's, it's completely relevant to bring it up. But other than that, I mean, I mean, I guess some feedback would be good on that too. Just like, is that something that you think you'd want to hear? Or is it just kind of a waste of time? I mean, some people may just skip it and it may not be something relevant. So I don't want to waste time with something that's not important for people. Um, and not saying that world news isn't important, but there are just so many topics to discuss. And I, as one person, just like picking out the topics every week, it's like, how how can I speak for everyone? How can I decide what should be spoken about or worthy of bringing to the podcast as far as news. And, and that's something I I think that there's too many avenues to explore with that and too many viewpoints with what people find important for me to kind of just choose in that way. But if y'all are all for that, then Hey, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, there's so many things. I mean, coronavirus, Trump and elections, political issues in India and Iran. Um, it's like, these are all very important issues to, to, very different people and or I mean people that are all dealing with the same thing maybe someone with the coronavirus that's invested in the elections and has family in Iran and India I don't know it's maybe it just influences everyone in some kind of way or maybe just like the fact that this is the world that we live in in political issues and in different areas whether it's in the country that you live in or outside the country that you live in will radiate in some kind of way because that's how things work they're all connected. We're all connected. It's a, uh, that's just how it works. But, um, interesting thing I found, I guess like I'm not going to speak about a specific news article, but something I did find while I was looking at news articles to try to decide was this article about engineered living material. And I think that's something super interesting. Well, assen- uh, essentially this is, uh, material that's using cells, mostly microbes and they build inert structural materials such as hardwood, uh, hardened cement, or wood-like replacements. So essentially, like, being able to build and construct bridges and houses off of these, off this engineered living material. And in, in this article, they spoke about cutting a brick in half and just putting more sediments and, like, rocks and sediments near it, and it started forming a whole other brick. So this one brick was split into two and was made into two other bricks. Like, it reconstruct it, it constructed itself into two bricks like really really amazing stuff so 
Um, I mean, you can look up this article yourself. I'm not going to go into too much depth, as I said, but it's engineered living material. It's very interesting stuff. And it, it speaks to not only the external environment that we have, like the buildings and structures that we have, but also our in internal environment where they're speaking about utilizing this in um, medical and biological ways. And I think that's uh, truly something amazing. But um, something else that came off of my Instagram feed for the Everything Under the Sun podcast uh, Instagram page was NASA and their new Land Rover set to land in February 18th, 2021. And I'm not sure if any of you have kept up with that or anything like that, but there was a huge storm that wiped out the previous Land Rover. It didn't, it just like dusted over it and caused it to lose its signal. So people at NASA were no longer able to communicate with it. It's essentially uh, dead and lost there. But the storm that wiped it out, it's pretty amazing. The storm, they said it's the size of the United States and Russia combined, which I think is pretty massive. Like it, a, a storm that big on earth would, I mean, that's, that's like a world ending storm. Like it, it would be detrimental, but I mean, I guess on a red planet where there's not very much life, I mean, microbial life and things like that, but well, there's not much other life. Well, I'm not even sure. Maybe I'm making fake news right now, but um, yeah, so so that next Land Rover is going to be there February 20th, I mean, February 18th, 2021, and hopefully it's going to be obviously better quality and maybe give us some information about this, this planet. I mean, I've always been into astrology and astrology, astronomy, and uh, just like the stars and the planets in our solar system. And I mean, it's, it's, it's really amazing. Just like the uh, beautiful chaos that is outside of, of this planet and in, in the universe, but um, it's really fascinating stuff. So I, of course, follow NASA on my Instagram page and would love to keep updates on that. But those are just uh, two things that I thought were interesting that I came across. I mean, not really in-depth news. You can look those look those up, and maybe that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll bring kind of headlines of things that I found interesting, and maybe you can look it up yourself because a lot of these things kind of uh, clickbait stuff where it's like you go to one news article and then you scroll all the way to the bottom because you're done, and there's like all these other news articles. So I fell into a little web just clicking on these different news articles for or what it is, and sometimes it's like fake news, but... A lot of times it's just like really interesting stuff that doesn't make it to popular news sites for some reason. But uh, so, yeah, that, that may be something I do. I'll just like highlight some things that maybe y'all can look up and provide some links on the social media pages for these articles and whatnot. And yeah, and, and maybe we'll just do that. But yeah, so that's that's as far as the new segment goes. Um, really look that stuff up. I mean, I mean, you don't have to. You can do whatever you want, but it's it's really interesting stuff at least i think it's interesting and that's also why i love some feedback because maybe it's not interesting to you and that's cool but anyway uh today we're speaking about social obligations i'm trying not to say uh as much so i mean you can create a drinking game to it if you want to but it's it's kind of difficult you know i'm not sure if anyone's actively try to not say things like um and like and so and things like that just to kind of make it through a conversation but I took a public speaking class and that was that was uh one of the hardest things to kind of get over was not saying um or saying like to conjoin sentences you know or ideas or thoughts because it's kind of just not not the best way to go about things so anyway going to go into the top for today, which is social obligations. And I think this is something that comes so close to home for all of us because we move in society. And a lot of times we feel like we're obligated to do certain things or act a certain way or be a certain way because of these social obligations that are pressed upon us by our society and by around us, by, by the people around us and the system around us. So, um, it was funny, I, I thought about this, um, well, I thought about the topic before this past weekend, but I went on a snowboarding trip this past weekend, um, didn't actually go snowboarding because of my ankle. I, I hurt my ankle back in December, and it was like the size of a golf ball, and I, not, not a golf ball, yeah, it was like the size of a golf ball um, on top of my actual ankle bone, and I mean, that doesn't sound too big, but I mean, when your ankle is swollen to the point where there's like a any kind of ball that can fit under it. I think that's that's pretty intense, but uh, I didn't want to go through that again. And 
I got this call from a friend saying, hey, you want to go snowboarding this weekend? I'm like, fuck yeah. I definitely want to go snowboarding. Didn't even think about my ankle at the time. The next morning when I got the call, I <laughs> he was like, are you ready to go? And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I think I'm ready to go. But I realized my ankle's messed up and I don't know if I'm going to be able to go snowboarding. And this is, uh, I mean, fortunately, like, you know, I mean, he's, he's someone that was like, well, you can still come and you can decide on the way or whatever, or if you want to decide. And that's kind of what I already decided. Cause I wanted to get out of town and take that vacation for myself, but I decided to do that because either way I was going to do it for myself, whether I was going to snowboard or whether I was going to enjoy my time for myself. Either way, I, I made the decision to go because I wanted to. So, uh, but that idea of, of my ankle hurting and like I had peer pressure from friends saying like, you should, you should go snowboarding. Like there's a lot of ankle support around the snowboards and you won't really hurt yourself. But I knew in myself that if I went snowboarding on the first run down, I hurt my ankle. It's a golf ball again. I can't put pressure on it for another month. And I wasted a hundred dollars on a ski lift an entire weekend in a different town because I decided to do something that wasn't true to what I felt I needed to do for myself. And yet, you know, I, I still felt kind of strangely pressured to, like I was considering, I was reconsidering my, my own idea, like with my ankle still like in this weird position, like we were driving in the car towards the mountain and my ankle's in this weird position, feeling the pain. I, I still, I'm still reconsidering going on the mountain. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, maybe there, there, it, it won't be too bad. There definitely is some ankle support in the snowboarding boots. And it, it was like me con- reconsidering the thing that I was very adamant on not doing at that time by that time I I was very adamant on not doing it because it wasn't worth it to me I think that is just like a very small example of social obligation and it's kind of like peer pressure in some way but a lot of times that that kind of blends together social obligation and peer pressure these these things that are put on us that are outside of us but that let me go into this example I went to google for this and uh google never fails fails me but uh the definition for social obligation. This is this is what it is, and I found it very interesting. For an individual, a social obligation is an informal need to do something based on a prescribed social etiquette. The example here is reciprocating an invitation to dinner is an op- is a social obligation when a person doesn't really want to do it. And I think that's just like as clear as day of what social obligation is, where anything with the word obligation in it, it doesn't sound fun. Not to me, at least. I mean, I'm not sure about you, but if anything says obligation, I'm just like, I'm not really about it yet. Social obligation is this thing that we can't seem to escape because we're very much part of society and, and part of the way that it moves and operates. Yet we're constantly pervading this idea of social obligation, these, these things that are outside of us. So again, that definition is for individual, a social obligation is an informal need to do something based on prescribed social etiquette. So there were, there were uh, two words in that, that definition that kind of caught my attention, and I looked for those definitions as well. The two words were informal and prescribed. So the definition for both of those are informal is having a relaxed, friendly, or unofficial style, manner, or nature. Okay. Prescribed. There's, of course, the medical definition, which isn't relevant for, for this, but there are two other definitions that are relevant in this situation. One being uh, prescribed, recommended a substance or action as something beneficial. The example here, marriage is often prescribed as a universal remedy. Not sure for what. Uh, I'm not saying that marriage is bad or anything. That that maybe came out wrong. But uh, it's just, I thought that was a funny example of this um, definition. But synonyms for this definition of prescribed is advised, recommended, advocate, command, urge, suggest. The other definition for prescribed is state authoritatively or as a rule that an action or procedure should be carried out. So again, to state authoritatively or as a rule that an action or procedure should be carried out. The example here, rules prescribing five acts for a play are purely arbitrary. I really wish I could have came up with better examples than the ones that were provided but i i was really stuck on (laughs) on really coming up with something it it didn't come out well but anyway uh the synonyms for that definition is stipulate lay down dictate specify impose command require (laughs) 
So we're going to look at the definition of social obligation again. Social obligation, an informal need to do something based on prescribed social etiquette. So if we were going to look at this in the light of the definition, social obligation is a relaxed, friendly, unofficial style or nature, an unofficial or relaxed need to do something based on advised, recommended, arbitrary, uh, advised, recommended, advocated, stipulate, dictated, specify, impose, command. That's kind of confusing. So a social obligation and a relaxed need to do something based on imposed social etiquette. I'm just going to use those synonyms specifically. Now, just in those definitions alone, or in that breakdown of that definition, it seems so strange that that is something that could ever even even make sense to be put in one one sentence or as a definition for that word social obligation is something that's relaxed yet imposed on you how can we truly feel natural in the way that we move or the way that we interact if it's something that's imposed from outside of us that it's it's just not it's not possible. I mean, that's that's paradoxical in like just the definition itself. And I, I find that there are a lot of words and phrases that we use that are very much paradoxical in that same sense where it's like, how do you accomplish both of these in the same, in the same way, yet they're used in the same sentence? I, I don't know. It's, a, it's really strange. But the New York Times posted a video, um, I believe in 2018, but I'll, I'll post the video on the social media pages. And the video was named Social Obligations, How to Get Out of Them. In this video, there's just a woman that's asked a question. I think it's like, do you want to go to dinner or something? And she says all these different different reasons or like examples of how to get out of that invitation. And it's it's funny because a lot of those are things that I myself have, you know, come up with or like said to kind of get out of social obligations, including... The last one, which she just says, I just need an item for myself. And even that, I've said that, just like being true to yourself, saying, you know what, I I don't really want to go out. I just need need a night for myself or I just need a day to myself, you know, and and just saying that, being true to yourself because you feel that you've been worn down, you you've extended yourself in so many different ways. You just don't want to do anymore. Yet that truth of just needing a day to yourself and needing a night to yourself, you can still feel anxiety just in just in doing something for yourself which I think is so strange because I've I've used that example like I said and I've felt that anxiety of did I make the right decision to stay inside and let myself rest because I'm socially exhausted me reconsidering that idea of like this thing that I'm strongly being pulled on from inside somehow this outside thing is so strong that's making me reconsider the thing that I'm truly feeling for myself. It's 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 really remarkable how social obligation creates this this strange need to put value on things outside of us rather than the things that we feel within us. Even uh even feeling as though like you're you're not or I mean like still feeling like bad about saying that or like declining that invitation it's like you not only feel like the anxiety in yourself or the anxiety about that decision that you just make but like there's also that feeling of FOMO uh the fear of missing out that we kind of have this strange I mean it, it seems to be like lingering within like the way that we make decisions you know someone asks us to go to dinner or go out and hang out at a bar or something or whatever it is, it's like, we feel like if we say no, not only are we wondering if we made the right decision in ourselves, but we're also wondering if we're, we're missing out on something by not doing that. And a lot of times I think that that's, that, that goes into that, that definition of prescribed, where it's like something that's said to be good. Marriage has been said to be a universal remedy. Whereas like, you know, just because something is said to be a certain way, doesn't mean that that's necessarily the case. So just because people say, oh, like you should get out, you should 
you should go, go socialize, you should go do these things, and you've already extended yourself in all these different ways, yet now you feel obligated because of these things that people are telling you are good for you, or that you should do because that's how you become more sociable, or that's how you become, I don't know, just like happier as a person. I think it's all kind of bullshit at the end of the day. It's like you become happy as a person and fulfilled as a person by trusting yourself as a person. <laughs> and and that's something that like I think that we we really neglect to do. Because at the end of the day, it's like, what would you have a fear of missing out on if there was nothing to oppose your intrinsic feeling of what you want? It's like if there wasn't that idea or that, that invitation to go out or something and you wanted to have like a movie Monday, you know, if you didn't get that invitation to go out, then you'd be enjoying your, your night curled up, you know, watching a movie or doing whatever you want to do. And it's like, you wouldn't feel any kind of, kind of way about it yet. There's this idea that when something is presented to us, something presented outside of us in conflict with what we truly feel like we want for ourselves, we, we feel like that somehow outweighs like this personal feeling that we have in ourselves. And I'm not saying this is for everyone. I mean, some people obviously have like a lot more conviction and some people, we just have to like move ourselves into being more of that person that trusts ourselves and values our own, our own opinions but th there's this strange thing that, like, I think has been instilled in us since we were very young that, that these, that to, I don't know, for some reason to put more value on these things outside of us. And now we have people walking around with smiles on their face yet hurting so immensely inside. And I think that that is something that just shows that this is completely false in the way that we place value and where we place value at. And... I think that like that's that's kind of where we have to begin is if we're constantly putting value on things outside of ourselves where do we begin to put the value in ourselves in our own decisions and in, in the things that help us to move socially yet cognitively and 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 true to ourselves uh yeah, to, to help us just move true to ourselves. I mean, because we can move in a social way, we can be sociable, we can we can do all the things that are prescribed as good social etiquette, but we can do it on our own terms. It's kind of like um, when I think about lifeguarding. Uh, I was a lifeguard for about four to six years, and one thing that's taught in training is that like if you go to save someone and you're going there to help, you're going there to extend yourself outside of yourself, you know, to, to go help someone else, you're going out there and they begin to bring you down. They begin to, to wrestle you. And now both of you are drowning because this person is panicking and, and you're extending yourself too much. Now they say this in training to push away from the person when they begin to do that. And at first I thought that was really messed up. I was like, why would you push away from someone that you're trying to save? But then the instructor said, how can you save that person? if you yourself are drowning. And this is something that goes into so many other areas where we can extend ourselves socially and move ourselves socially, but how much is it at the detriment of ourselves? And and when do we have to push away? When do we have to push back and say, nope, you know, I need to I need to swim back, I need to catch my breath and then come around another avenue when when I see like that avenue presenting itself. That's that's how we need to move about in ourselves because the world will constantly try to bring us down and drag us down and pull so many things out of us and get everything out of us. But how much are we giving back to ourselves? How much are we realizing the the value that we have in ourselves and, and the decisions that we have? So again, yeah, that goes into uh, this topic of creating value in the fact that we need to do things for ourselves sometimes. And that can be really hard, especially with this constant feeling that there's this social obligation that's making us feel like we we're wrong for doing the things that's true to ourselves. But the value begins with trusting ourselves, you know, doing what we feel we need to do for ourselves and also appreciating it and standing by that position of that decision. I, I, used to drink, uh, I mean, I, I wasn't like an alcoholic or anything, but I, I drank a lot, you know, early 20s shenanigans and just, you know, it was just very exhausting. It was very exhausting and I knew it was exhausting and there were times where 
I was very tired and didn't want to go out. And then friends would say, hey, come out like, you know, I'm only in town for this weekend or I have to work all week or I haven't seen you in blah, blah, blah amount of time, you know, come out and hang out. And then like I feel conflicted with myself to go out. And that's kind of that's kind of how it was. And I, I, I was so drained. I was so like drained because I kept extending myself. And I, of course, like I enjoy the company of the people that I care about. But even if you enjoy the company of people that you care about, there's still that time that you have to keep for yourself and that you have to that you have to do for yourself. And as I, as I begin to move into like less going into the bars or going out, like, I, don't get me wrong, I, I still go out and I still have a drink or two. But when I started coming more into terms with what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go with my life and my decisions, then, you know, I, I specifically brought Movie Monday because I got invited to go out to a bar on a Monday night. I think it was like free pool or something like that, or half price drinks or whatever it was. And I was thinking to myself because I declined the offer to go out and I was saying to myself as I declined the offer and started watching the movie, I was like, wow, I am really happy right now. Like I was very comfortable in my bed, like just hanging out. I had just eaten, I had just eaten dinner, completely relaxed and thought to myself, wow, I'm really happy I made this decision. And that was just completely the opposite of what I would have done just like a year or so before where it's like that decision decision to stay in I would have felt like I was missing out on something or that I would have that I need to stay social in order to keep these relationships but at the end of the day it's like you know you may lose relationships because you're not as social as people feel like you need to be but at the end of the day it's like the people that are meant to be around you the people that should be around you or the people that you want to be around you are the ones that are are on your same are on your same wave, wavelength like they're understanding you know like maybe they do go out and stuff like that but they also respect the fact that maybe you want to stay in and if they they are true friends of yours and they value that time for who you are and not just like who you are as your party or whatever it is then then maybe they'll suggest a movie night or they'll suggest a an event like bowling or you know it's like or just like something that's like very low-key and something that you can be a little bit more in tune with because it's more in tune with you and it, it can be kind of difficult to to bring yourself to that, but it starts with appreciating and standing by the decisions that you make. And this this not only like validates your decisions, but it also allows you to gain more trust in your decision making process. Like in your yeah, in your decision making. Like you not only get to realize that like I'm making the decision for myself, but you also realize the value that it brings to stand by your decision. And now in future situations, you're going to trust that you're making the right decision. You're not going to have that fear of missing out because you are doing what you want. The only time that we we have a fear of missing out is when we're truly not listening to ourselves or like we're not valuing this decision that we make. Because, I mean, you wouldn't have a fear of missing out if you were planning on going or planning on doing that thing now i mean like if you want to go to a show or something you have to work then of course there's like a fear of missing out in that way but i mean that's like not necessarily a social obligation that's more like personal want and desire I'm, I'm speaking more in the sense of um things outside of you that are going against the decision that you want to make for yourself and and yeah and i think it really starts with building that trust within yourself and the the decisions that you make to better yourself and that that make you feel happy because at the end of the day it's like the world outside will constantly ask and demand things from us but it's up to us to listen to ourselves because no one's reading our minds no one's listening to ourselves for us we have to listen to ourselves and and realize that we are only obligated to ourselves and that may sound selfish but sometimes we have to be selfish and i'm not saying like to disregard other people's feelings or or situations and things like that no not at all like be caring be loving be kind as a human and and connect in those ways but when someone is pulling you down when that drowning victim is is pulling you down and making you drown along with them that's when you have to realize okay i need to push back i need to catch a breath for myself and get myself back to a place where i'm ready to re re-engage with the situation and and that's all you have to do and it it's I mean, I said that's all you have to do as if it's like just that easy, you know, but it's it's a process, something that we have to work. But I think the realization of where 
what what like how many avenues this pervades i think that's kind of where we begin to understand how much it's affecting us we social obligations i mean they they go outside of just being asked to go out to dinner or asked to go out to the bar it, it can go to as far as like going to work when you're sick you know i had I have a roommate that um was really sick and had you know no more sick leave for work but felt like they were obligated to go into work anyway now of course like if you don't have any sick leave then like you're gonna be you know you're gonna have some kind of thing go against you because of that but at the end of the day it's like how can you work your job if you are feeling miserable if you work yourself to the bone and get so sick that now like you're better and then like then what help is that to anyone now you're now you're in bed and you're sick longer now you're going to lose like you may lose your job just because of the fact that like you hadn't take care you hadn't taken care of yourself in that initial onset you hadn't listened to yourself in that initial onset and and so many people go to work sick because they feel like it's a complete necessity and of course like you have to put food on your table you have to pay bills and things like that but think about it in a critical way like maybe you do really need those hours and you really do need to work and you have to push yourself inside of that and that's something that like you within yourself you have to build that motivation and decide like can I make it through this day and get what I need to get done in order to like not feel completely miserable then then yeah then like that's that's that avenue but when it comes to being sick and Maybe you lose out on pay, but you kind of calculate the odds and you're like, you know what, I can, I can risk that because I know that my health and my, my well-being is more important than these obligations that are outside of me. I mean, at the end of the day, your boss is going to still be making money. There's still going to be employees going to work. Like the, the business itself isn't going to collapse. I mean, unless you're the CEO or something. I mean, but even if you're the CEO, then you have other people that are working like they're, I mean, most businesses or organizations and and systems that you know if one part is missing like for a day or two then it's not going to all crumble you know and you know I I guess you know I'm speaking from a term of a general sense but maybe some people have experiences outside of that where it's like they are truly necessary for the running of that business and I think that sounds just really stressful but really weigh the pros and cons of it because I think that a lot of us feel as though there's no other option or there's no other avenue and um, there actually is, you know, like a lot of us feel like if we don't go to work, then we're going to get fired and it's going to be just, you know, not, it's going to be a a bad day or bad experience just for taking care of yourself. But at the end of the day, it's like, that's not always the case. Just like most situations with doing your own thing, it's not going to, it's not going to lead to you falling victim to some kind of like ill circumstance. I'm not sure if that made sense, but um, yeah, so it, it can be going to work when you're sick. It can be engaging with someone that you don't want to talk to, you know, like people that you don't necessarily feel obligated to, or, or, or just like not even doing something that like you feel like you need to do. Just like the example of the dinner being reciprocated. Sometimes you don't have to necessarily reciprocate that dinner. And if you don't want to do that, then like, that's not something that you have to necessarily do. Um, things like I don't know it's it's it really can go on forever about like just the the ways in which we're we're bound in uh certain societal norms and things like that so I'm gonna wrap it up but at the end of the day it's like do what's best for you if staying in is what you want to do then stay in and and love it you know like have yourself a movie Monday you know uh enjoy a taco Tuesday with Netflix um I watch Netflix Wednesday (laughs) um uh, the same thing as yesterday, Thursday, uh, fall asleep Friday, fall asleep early Friday. I don't know. Uh, just, I mean, this is very, odd. <laughs> I don't know. In college, I'm just like thinking about college and how those, uh, those days of the week meant very different things in college. But, you know, now I'm not in college and it's not something that's really important for me or not something that's like really relevant for me. So those, those days change according to how I change. And, and that's, that's basically what it's about. It's about doing your own thing enjoying your time and doing it for yourself and if you want to socialize then then do that for yourself as well but always know that like you are the prime candidate in this life because you're the one that's living it so um be true to yourself 
enjoy these conversations with other people because I trust that there are other people that are going through the same thing or have dealt with similar situations. And, and the best thing about a lot of these things is when we have these conversations, we build connections, we build unity, we build understanding, and we build a trust that can that can go so much further than than just that conversation. We build we build relationships, we build uh, personalities and strengths within ourselves by by being true to those things that are that are more meaningful to us. So always say um, stay obligated to yourself above all else and society can wait at the end of the day. So um, yeah, that's I, I can go on for so long with this topic and I feel like I kind of rambled on at the end right there, but I'm gonna gonna blame it on the running pneumonia. And, uh, I guess I, I wrote, I wrote this down, uh, a song to check out. I, this, I do remember this song. I, I was listening to the song. I was thinking about this podcast and like in really deep thought. And then the song came on in my earphones and I was instantly snapped out of thought and like encapsulated in this song. And it's just like a guitar, um, instrumental, but it's called, uh, Escorialis by California Collective. And, um, yeah, I mean, check it out if you want to. I'm not sure if it's, it's your jam necessarily, but again, it's just a, a guitar instrumental type of thing, but, uh, yeah, I guess check it out. It, it's, I'm going to listen to it again, just to kind of get back in that zone of what I was thinking, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to end it there. Uh, again, go to the email, send in those, uh, topic ideas if you'd like to everything.sunpodcast at gmail.com. I do want to make a correction for last week. I said Twitter was everything.sunpodcast, but it's actually every sun podcast. So that's the at handle. That's the handle name. I'm not good with social media, but uh, that's the that's the handle name is every sun podcast. I also made the Facebook group page every sun podcast as well. And the Instagram page is everything.sunpodcast still, but I may change that to every sun podcast as well, just so it's all uniform, but all the platforms didn't have the every everything.sunpodcast as an availability, so I obviously had to change it up, but so those are the podcasts, I mean, those are the, uh, those are the social media accounts, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, join the group, everything under the sun podcast. If you want to find this podcast, I think that you have to put in a little more extra, like a little extra detail, put in everything under the sun tie because there are like three or four other everything under the sun podcasts and it makes me feel unoriginal, but you know what? I'm going to keep with the name because society wants me not to. Anyway, uh, so go to those, uh, go to those Instagram pages, rate, review, subscribe, please. And enjoy your day for yourself. I love you all. And I will see you next time.